Hey everyone, Jimmy with the Triple C Collective here for another Movie Monday review. Today we're going to be diving into Clerks 3 and um, my uh, early screening that I saw of it. Uh, so like, I'm really excited to kind of talk about that. Um, I'm a that Kevin Smith Club member. Um, Kevin Smith is arguably my biggest film influence. Um, I love him. Clerks 2 is my like arguably my favorite movie of his uh because the like ending speech to it with randall talking to dante about getting the uh buying back the quick stop and running it themselves and that's because what they should do and all of that like instead of like him going off to florida and getting married um so yeah i've always really loved that movie i've always really loved uh kevin smith um you know as a dopey white kid from uh chicago you know born and raised in a roman catholic uh, roman catholic household here on the south side um it would I've, I've always really connected to him and his stories on multiple levels um so this was a really cool opportunity being a that kevin smith club member they put out a you know message um basically seeing uh if you wanted to try and secure a ticket to an early screening of clerks three uh, test screening they like kept saying it was a test screening and like I was really excited about it So I would put my name in tried to see if I could get uh, two tickets I, I'm married so I wanted my wife to come with me because we've never as big of movie fans as like we are And as much as I love doing things like this uh, We've never gone to a test screening or never had the opportunity really to to see one um, so that was uh, really cool to have this opportunity and so like uh, I filled out the stuff that I needed to with my information. I ended up securing one ticket for myself, not two, and that's fine. Not knocking anything about it. I am internally grateful that I was able to go through and have uh, this wonderful experience. So um, after that, uh, my wife and I, we figured out travel arrangements and where I could stay, flew into New York, drew, uh, drove into Jersey. Um, this was, I flew in on a Sunday and it was really great because that Sunday, uh, Kevin and Jay were having uh, their Jingle Bash at the Secret Stash. So it was this picture here of them um, with me and them. And uh, so like, it, it, that was really cool. So I got to do a meet and greet with them during the day. Then at night is when we had the, uh, uh, the, the, the Clerks 3 test screening at, uh, at Smod Castle, and that was really great because um, earlier in the day, I got to see Smod Castle and stuff for the first time. I got to take some pictures. I will actually um, take a moment to put up a couple of pictures here, like just highlighting a little bit of outside of uh, Quick Stop and uh, Smod Castle and stuff for anyone who's never seen it and would like to see it. So there you go. Those are those pictures. Now, um, once I got to Smod Castle, you know, we started the screening and it was really great. And um, Kevin uh, introed like he does anything else and let us know that uh, the cut we are seeing then uh, was about 94% complete. He said like picture was like, you, you, you know, it was 94% complete. They needed to do some mixing and some things. And then, um, you know, uh, what we did see is, is that, um, and then I'll actually wait until I dive into the movie to tell you what we see. And then he was like, at this one point in the movie, you're only going to see uh, these people here because I haven't had a chance to do the uh, do the rest of the cameos for everybody who's out on the West Coast and stuff yet. And we were like, oh, OK, that's cool. That was really neat. Um, so then, yeah, we uh, we dove in and the movie was great. So what I am going to do now is if you guys want, you can. Um, turn your uh if you want to square up your tv or your blu-ray or wherever you're watching this from i am going to go ahead and start this and i will go ahead and um do a commentary track for it um so now i've just started uh just started clerks 3 we're getting the opening title sequence of like uh lion's gate and everything like that um i'm super excited this was uh really great stuff um, I love that Lionsgate did it. I love the opening animation here for the Smodco and um, the Quick Stop and stuff. Like, that's really neat stuff. Um, you see the Destro films. Uh, Liz Destro. Uh, Destero, maybe. 
is how you might say her name, but she's a producer of all this stuff. We see the clown, the view skew clown, which um, you actually see like the story being told in the movie Vulgar. Now we get the uh, Welcome to the Black Parade by uh, My Chemical Romance is playing. I remember when Kevin Smith actually announced that uh, my, uh, Welcome to the Black Parade uh, was going to be here. Now we see the uh, opening of the Quick Stop Groceries. We see a minivan pulling in. Um, but when uh, I heard about <laughs> Welcome to the Black Parade opening up Clerks 3, I really didn't like it. I didn't like the idea of it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of My Chemical Romance, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so I just didn't like get it, but now after the multiple times of watching this movie, I saw it for the test screening, saw it twice for the Fathom events, and then I saw it for the uh, Inconvenience tour. Dante just took off the gum and started opening up the um, pull down for the uh, windows there. Um, but as I uh, as I was going, um, oh man. I just lost my train of thought, but that's okay. Um, so Dante's in the store now, and it's this is so cool. I loved actually being at the store when I had a chance to see it. It was really cool. Oh, what I was saying is that I just didn't understand My Chemical Romance and Welcome to my uh, Welcome to the Black Parade. Um, but Welcome to the Black Parade has 100% grown on me as I've watched this movie. Like I said, I saw it for the test screening, Inconvenience Tour, and then twice in the Fathom events. Um, this is probably right here where we see Dante looking at the uh, uh, the mask card for Rebecca, for Becky. Um, that was something that I did not see in that original cut, uh, or in that test screening. I shouldn't say original cut. In that test screening, um, they didn't have that insert. So it was just Dante getting ready, getting together. He puts his hand on the register, and then we cut to Randall getting out of... Uh, walking out of the door and like going to a quick stop. He, Randall, is also wearing the hockey jersey that I am. Um, I When I went to the convenience uh, tour, uh, Kevin was really extremely kind. There was a one item limit and I originally wanted him to sign my quick stop uh, comic. He was kind enough to not only sign my quick stop comic, but my other one, both of his, masquer his masquerade number one and number two, my VIP badge for the convenience tour and he was even so awesome as to sign my quick stop groceries uh, jersey that I will now never be wearing again and I am going to put up in a picture frame and hang it on my wall um, so thank you for all of that and of course you know now for quick stop we've got everyone playing hockey as they do on top of the quick stop uh, grocery and it's just great to see it was great to see. It was great to see, uh, you know, Jeff Anderson return as uh, Randall. I thought he was um, greatly missed in Jay and Silent Bob reboot, which is a um, picture here of me and my wife with Kevin and Jay. And then now, of course, we get the illustrious Jay and Silent Bob opening up their RST THC store because they now own um, they now own half of the Quick Stop and that land and everything. Um, one of my favorite things here about Clerks 3 and actually the uh, rooftop hockey scene is the Leonardo Reapers jersey. Um, it's actually one of my favorite jerseys that Kevin Smith has released with uh, geeky jerseys. And it was probably because I was so shocked. Like I never thought it was like an awful design. I actually thought it was a really cool design, but when I had it, some of the colored green that they had for like the Reaper and stuff on it was just really amazing. So that's really cool to see, you know, a lot of the comic book men up there, like Ming Chen, Walt and all of them, like kind of um, wearing those you got, uh, and then you've got other people wearing um, like the quick stop one. Actually, Walt and Brian Johnson were wearing Quick Stop. Of course, they do the classic gag of the line then getting out in front of it. Um, but this was all really great. Like, I really loved um, coming back here and hanging out with these um, friends and stuff again. Like, this was really awesome. I love this movie. I love Kevin Smith. This stuff was so much fun. I like this little crane shot that we get where we see cars parked out front. We see the line, the extended line, and the hockey game all going on. Um, it's really great. Now we get, um, you know, Jay and Kevin are outside of the, uh, their RST THC store. They've got a, excuse me, a customer 
who's looking to get some green from them. Uh, three pre-rolls for a hundred dollars even. That is outrageous. Um, that is insane price, but hey, whatever. Um, <laughs> the best part about this is how <laughs> they have Jay like just take the money all like really horribly, like trying to be non nonchalant and discreet about it, but really he's not. He's just causing so much attention, and I mean they do the fake sneeze and everything for it. Oh man, this is. This is really awesome. Um, but yeah, so like this is the beginning of uh, Clerks 3. Now we also get the introduce, introduction of, uh, of uh, Trevor Furman. Or, um, oh man, Trevor, that's his real name. Um, I can't think of what his... Elias. We get Elias. And it's awesome. Um, the people who were driving Elias and um, Austin, who is uh, Harley Quinn Smith's uh, boyfriend, who is an actor of himself. He was pretty good in, um, oh man, That Cruel Summer maybe is what Harley Quinn was in. He was really funny in this, and he was really funny in that Sun and Lockdown thing that they did. Um, but then we get, you know, Trevor Furman back as Elias. Um, the people who drove Trevor and his version of Silent Bob. Um, we get Blockchain, uh, Blockchain Coltrane here. Um, <laughs> he's like the Silent Bob version um, to Elias. Um, but they were driven in by Kevin Smith's uh, in-laws. Uh, Byron and Gail were the people who drove him to the quick stop here. Um, and then we get more of... Uh, <laughs> We just get more of uh, Trevor going on, um, or I should say Elias, going on saying that he's not in a religious death cult. They're making really, like, uh, he said his blockchain's making really punny jokes and stuff, and like, oh man. And <laughs> I love that they're talking about NFTs and uh, crypto, and like, you understand any of that stuff? No. Um, but all of this is great. The awkwardness between Trevor and Austin's like handshake that clearly goes on for way too long, but is just amazing. Um, it's so good to see this. It's so funny to see this. Um, Dante is telling Elias, you know, stop calling me Mr. Dante. And th this is just great. It was great to, to see these three back together because, like I said, Clerks 2 was very, um, it's very important to me and I loved it a lot. And, um, you know, I, I love seeing these interactions between these three. These three are really great. Um, you know, try, I actually had a wonderful opportunity to meet all of them, uh, like the whole, the whole Clerks uh, 2 cast over uh, this summer um, between going to Fan Expo in Chicago and C2E2 in Chicago, I was able to meet the whole cast and that was really great. I met Jeff Anderson, I met Brian O'Halloran, I met uh, Trevor Furman, uh, I met Kevin and Jay there and then Rosario Dawson was at uh, C2E2 uh, this past summer as well and that was really cool because then I was able to get everyone to sign, uh, the entire cast to sign my Clerks 2 uh, Blu-ray, which was amazing. It was a great time. I love it. And now, um, now we get into like kind of what uh, Clerks Three is going to kind of be about a little bit. Like we have, you know, Randall uh, giving uh, Trevor you know, or uh, giving Elias just a bunch of crap because you know Elias is trying to sell Jesus kites, and Randall, of course, is talking down to him as like, who wants to buy? kites let alone kites with jesus on them like i i don't get what you're trying to do here Elias. i just don't understand it and um this is actually uh where like i didn't know what they were going to do with this movie oh we get uh we also see uh jason mew's wife uh jordan and their jason and jordan's daughter uh logan come in here buying some cereal <laughs> and um so they, uh, that's always really funny. But like what I was getting at here is, you know, Randall's starting to get all worked up against Elias because I don't know, Randall just likes to argue. Um, and so, 
<laughs> now we get the introduction of a good thief and the butt thief from um, Elias about the you know the two thieves hanging next to Jesus while they were being crucified. Um, and the conversation that they have going on here is just ridiculous. It's absolutely wild. Um, you know, <laughs> and Randall's asking, what is a butt thief? And why is <coughs> why is the one thief saying that they are um, nothing but thieves or whatever? <laughs> and so they just don't understand it. Um, but, you know, Randall is going back and forth with them. And this is um, a lot, but you start seeing Randall actually kind of become a little uncomfortable. Like he starts closing his eyes a little bit, taking a deep breath, kind of clutching like almost at his chest a little bit. And like you can tell he's like really like um, annoyed, but he also feels off. Like, like this is weird. And of course, like what we know that's happening here is uh, what... You know what happened to Kevin Smith a few years ago is that he also had a heart attack as well. And what we are seeing here is life imitating art, and he is giving his character Randall the beginning of a heart attack here. And now it really starts to set in. We do the close up, the little shakiness of the camera that's like not super like still that you would get normally. It's meant to give you like the feeling of being like messed up like something's wrong and all of that <laughs> and elias is like like what's going on i can't catch my breath Randall's like i can't catch my breath it's just really hot in here let's open up a door and elias is like do you need me to do mouth stuff for you <laughs> get out of here randall's like um so all of this is great but randall collapses into some chips dante um <laughs> we get uh dante calling uh an ambulance and we get, uh, you know, we get brought to the hospital. And uh, Randall, of course, is pissed at Dante for calling. Uh, Randall, of course, is pissed at Dante for calling the hospital or calling an ambulance. And we get Dr. Leidenheim, uh, who is, um, God, she put, I can't think of her name. This is horrible. She is in uh, The Mandalorian as a, um, uh, what's her name? What is her name as I check it out right now? Dr. Leidenheim, where are you? Amy Sedaris. She plays Dr. Leidenheim, and this is great. This whole scene right here with uh, with Amy Sedaris, she's amazing. We, uh, we probably all recognize her more recently from like Mandalorian and now obviously Clerks 3. But um, it's really interesting. We also get the introduction of Justin Long's uh, nurse here, which is really awesome. He's got a really great, like funny voice as he always does. Like um, when he was in uh, Zack and Mary make a porno and then when he shows back up in Reboot, I think he in reboot and Zack and Mary make a porno. He's the same character because he has like a similar voice. This one's a lot. This one's a, a a funny voice, unique voice that he's doing himself. But it's definitely different than the other two he previously had done. Um, so Justin Long though is being was sent here by Amy Sedaris's Doctor Leidenheim to go ahead and shave his pubic pubic region because they need to put a stem up an artery for him and. Uh, <laughs> it's so funny um he gives him a little bit of privacy and you know randall is just refusing to take his pants off um uh, refusing to do this and <coughs> it's it's hilarious <laughs> randall's like first of all what established geography what's the groin to you <laughs> Justin Long just has no idea what, um, like, how to answer that. It gives great response. All of this stuff is really awesome. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, Randall, of course, is, like, giving a long speech about how he has a, uh, about how he has a small dick and he doesn't want anyone to see it, so he doesn't want to take off his pants. Um, and this
this is just absolutely hilarious. Uh, this is also really funny because it's reflective on like similar stuff of what like Kevin himself uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, like said about it, about how he didn't want to take his pants off or whatever for that during that as well. It's also interesting that like during Kevin's and what we're seeing here is that like you know Randall's like alive and conscious like I don't know most times whenever a heart attack is depicted in like movies or TV or anything else like I'm never really seeing a person have a heart attack in like real life I'm not sure I really want to but um whenever you see it you I mean I almost feel like they're always like um like unconscious but now Randall gets taken away to go into surgery and now we get another glimpse and again when I first saw this this was weird we see a glimpse of Rosario Dawson on a uh, stretcher being brought in and like what well, we see uh, Dante following her in one of his sweaters and stuff and it's like a really emotional moment and I remember there being like oh my god is Rosario Dawson dead like because again at the beginning we didn't have the insert shot of Dante uh, touching the, uh, we had Dante touching the register, but we didn't see the insert of the mask card that was also, you know, taped to the register. Then, um, so obviously Dante has that um, little flashback there, you know, um, that's our, supposed to, that's, for me, that was our first tick, but for everybody else, that's our second nod that something bad had happened, and that's why we haven't seen her yet. Um, of course, you know, Randall gets into the gets into the back. Um, Amy Sedaris is wondering why his pants are still on. And then we get to the waiting room, and of course, Dante is sitting with Elias, and Elias is freaking out because previous to right before Randall having his heart attack, you know, Elias asked God to strike him down. And uh, so, yeah, it was um, absolutely... Uh, ridiculous now we get the cut back and forth between like the waiting room of dante and elias and then uh we also get you know uh randall telling uh <laughs> telling dr Leidenheim about season two of mandalorian and she mentions ranger danger which is awesome because like we see um for it for jay and silent bob uh, uh reboot um for that if you did a VIP experience with them, you got a Ranger Danger cover, like with some artwork and stuff, of the uh, of the script signed by Jay and Kevin, and that was really great. That was really cool to see. So like now we get the uh, <laughs> we get Randall playing praying to Crom. We get Elias play, praying to God, and Elias then decides now that God's not listening, and he decides that he needs to uh, worship Satan. And Jesus has abandoned him and, and all of them at the uh, quick stop. And so Elias decides, yeah, uh, uh, Satanism is now for him. And this is absolutely just hilarious. <laughs> it's absolutely wild um, with this. Uh, they're th it, like Elias is just taking like God and religion through the ringer. And it's just so funny. Because like Elias, like obviously there's been a bunch of um, there's been a bunch of years between like Clerks Two was released in 2006, Clerks Three for all intents and purposes was released in 2022, you know that's a solid uh, let's see 16 years basically um, between movies. So like it's awesome to see how they have aged and stuff, but like. Now we get Elias with his, uh, <laughs> his uh, <laughs> devil like metal horns and stuff, and like that's just great. It's just awesome to see. It's uh, so funny, and uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but Elias then strips down into the uh, into the waiting room, and this is hilarious. This is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and then Randall... Oh, I'm sorry. This is when Randall talks about uh, Luke Skywalker and the end of uh, Mandalorian. And uh, it's like, not Gran Torino, Luke from Last Jedi. Um, that's so funny. 
Landon Hines like, all right, we're about to put a stent up in your heart, so like, um, I'll need to, you know, let you know. I need you to let me know um, when you feel the pressure lets up. And, <laughs> and Randall's like, okay, Doc, this is the way. What? Oh, that's a saying from The Mandalorian. <laughs> The Star Wars show that I was just telling to you about. Ladenheim's <laughs> annoyed with his uh, with his references, and it's awesome. But like, then we get Randall being like, "Oh my God, I can breathe again." Does that mean I'm gonna live? <laughs> and yeah, because I'm good at my job, and you're the best doctor. Doctor Zane is confined with. Doctor Who? Oh no, I don't watch that show, but I might start now. <laughs> Mazel tov. <laughs> this is so great. But, um, yeah. You're like the Batman of heart surgery. <laughs> With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Does it in like the Christian Bale voice. So, Randall's out, sees Dante, and Austin and this is great. I love it. Um, so Dante's like, "Oh, he's got to be on a lot of drugs now." And Randall's like, "No, I was sober the whole time." <laughs> and Doctor Lane and I, he's like, is a kite on fentanyl. He doesn't know where he is right now or what's going on." Um, all of this is just so funny. Um, <laughs> Um, but Dr. Leidenheim says, uh, you know, uh, confirms the size of uh, Randall's uh, genitalia as being normal or average or whatever form. That makes Randall feel good. Then she has the hard conversation with uh, Dante saying that, you know, a lot of people after a heart attack feel depressed. So try and do things, you know, to keep them upbeat, happy, make sure he lowers his cholesterol um, I'm also talking about you. You better start taking better care of your health because if you eat like this dude does, you're not far behind him. Um, and you know, like that, uh, this is, uh, this is just like a tough part of the movie. Like this is one of those things, um, where I was like, I remember for the first time, like once we got here, I was like, oh man, this may not be as, um, like ha 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 funny happy go lucky as like most of his other stuff and like that they, that we might be in for a uh you know bumpy ride or something here and um yeah this was it, this was great i've always um again i've always loved kevin smith i loved uh seeing this now Randall's in his recovery room. We see Dante walk in. On the uh, screen, we see a cantina sign up there. I believe it's the symbol for the scum and villainy cantina, um, where, uh, like, previous to the pandemic and everything, uh, they used to do Fat Man on Batman there, like, weekly. Um, if I ever get a chance to go out to L.A., I want to go there to scum and villainy cantina. That would be a blast to go to. I would love going to that. I think that would just be a lot of fun. It's a sounds like a good time. Um, it's I mean I love Star Wars too, so like I'm I'm here for it. I'm here for all of that stuff. I'm super stoked for it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, now you know this is where Dante and Randall are now talking about what they are going to do or what Randall wants to do now going forward. He's like, you know, you saved my life. I, I didn't have a life worth saving. You know, I haven't done anything with it. Like, what did I do with my life? What have I done here with all of this stuff, with any of this stuff? And, um, you know, he w decides that he wants to, you know, I've spent my whole life, you know, watching movies you know, I'd always thought I'd do more, like, <laughs> building his life towards something like we all want to do, right? Um, this seems to be, like, the definition of, like, I don't know, middle, <laughs> mid-age uh, meltdown here. Uh, Midlife crisis, as they say, after, like, the heart attack. Um, and uh, Randall's like, you know, if I drop dead tomorrow, only you and Elias would feel bad or know who I was, you know. I just sat around and watched stupid movies all day. 
you know, what's wrong with me? Why did I waste my time? Dante's like, I don't know about all of that, but I thought I always thought you could make a movie. And then it hits Randall. I'm going to make a movie. Yeah. That's what I need to do. And Dante's like, what? <laughs> what, are we, what are we talking about? You're going to make a movie? Do you even know? <laughs> so during this conversation, they do a reaction shot cut back to Brian O'Halloran. And they, they, do, they do one and like his shocked like eyes and stuff like that amazing brian i love it you're so great um <laughs> and so like <laughs> like randall's like i'm gonna make a movie and then they cut to you know uh them driving around trying to be like don't you need to go to school for that and randall's like 75 get k for that and they go back and forth and they start figuring out how to you know what are they gonna do for the movie you know how is he gonna do this like he's never made a movie he's never written a screenplay like just because you've watched a bunch of movies doesn't necessarily mean it'll equate to you know you knowing how to do all this stuff or how to execute all of this stuff um so what are you doing here like how are we gonna do this um and randall just equates it he's like i'm not really good at sex but that doesn't stop me from trying um then we get them back at the quick stop uh we get <laughs> elias putting up the i assure you he's alive um sign <laughs> which is always great to see for like you know i assure you we're open and everything um the ride me now app is also extremely funny to see it's their uber or their version of uber and stuff and like oh man hilarious hilarious um i love seeing the chulies and stuff and like the nail cigarettes like those have been things that have been staples from uh uh from you know all the view of skew movies and everything like that and like clerks and everything it's it's been great to see i i freaking love it i think it's so funny to see that stuff um and it's really awesome to see it coming back uh uh but here back at the store they're talking about um, what is going to be a scene. What's it going to be about? You know, Randall's like, we're going to film it at the convenience store. It's going to be about us. It's going to be about my life and like working here and everything like that. And so they just went through a bunch of different like possible scenes and ideas. Now they've got um, blockchain and Elias came back in and... Uh, <laughs> everyone keeps thinking that randall's just gonna make a porn movie um a sex movie or something he's like no a movie movie you know um and you know everyone's gonna be in it or at least their characters will be in it and uh <laughs> and they just name elias and blockchain crafty so they will be in charge of all of the food and everything like that for themselves um for this movie and everything and uh it's just extremely funny to see extremely funny to see this and um yeah they, uh, <laughs> one scene that they decide to put in um or that they talk about putting in is in the original clerks movie they talk about the death star contractors and like how like yeah the first death star like yeah they're all you know stormtroopers empire evil people but the second one there are probably some innocent people who were just like contractors building things you know that's just like what they did they just signed up for a different contract and randall and them are like no and randall's like no i don't and get sued by disney i'm not gonna put that in there and it's really awesome because in for all intents and purposes disney via bill burr's character in the mandalorian season two addresses that addresses specifically the second death star and has that conversation and it's awesome it's awesome um so uh now they uh randall and dante have to go ask jay and silent bob if they can film in the rst video because you know to be fair that is their building so they don't they might own that property together but that building is, you know, is both, or they might own that building together, but that store is technically there. So Randall and Dante don't have any, 
um, ownership or being able to just be like, hey, we're using this now. Um, and so he <laughs> returned a movie, um, a VHS tape after like 27 years and the video store has been closed for 10 years so they had it for you know something like uh you know 17 years and then an extra 10 years after <laughs> they forgot they also get the joke here of jane samba or jay forgetting that they own the video store um <laughs> yeah a dollar a day for 28 years ten thousand dollars but you know uh, we'll let you slide on it oh uh, they forgot to rewind it ten thousand two hundred and twenty dollars and a quarter and or 50 cents uh do you guys take crypto you're in crypto no <laughs> if you never watched it how was it not rewound I never said we. I never said. Uh, I said we didn't have a VCR. I never said we didn't watch it. He used to hold it up, <laughs> like the tape up to the light and stuff. Oh man, that's so funny. Um, but they're like, hey, if you let us shoot here, we'll write. We'll wipe the. Uh, we'll wipe the uh, balance clean for you guys, and uh, <laughs> we'll wipe the deck clean for you guys. And they are trying to get. Uh, they're also, you know, Jane and Bob are also asking, uh, you know, Randall if it's going to be a sex movie because that's just what they would expect and stuff from it. Um, Dante's closing up the Quick Stop groceries. We um, hear music playing or whatever. And then, uh, you know, Dante walks over to the door that Randall originally started walking out, started the movie walking out of. Find, come to find out that that's his like little mini apartment and he yells back out 37 and Dante's like no Randall that's not a scene that's not a scene stop writing 37 cannot <laughs> Jay comes out of RST THC shut the fuck up it is it is uh, it is nighttime <laughs> is what he says but yeah um, then in a night Randall cranks out the script that um, that they will be calling convenience stories, which is awesome because we got the uh, Kevin Smith called the uh, Clerks Three uh, tour the uh, the inconvenience tour and stuff. So like that was really great. This was all really awesome. Um, and yeah, they're going through the script, what works, what doesn't, um, when people are introduced and stuff. Uh, Randall changed all of his, uh, changed everyone's like names to like Dan T instead of Dante and Randy and <laughs> all of this, st all of these kind of things. It's all kind of ridiculous and. Um, <laughs> Um, Dante is not happy that he's inter not introduced until, uh, <laughs> until, uh, like page 37 is introduced as a, a hideous, ugly, uh, chud of a man. <laughs> and Dante's just mad. He's like, I can't believe you made me sign a non-disclosure for this. Like, what is even going on here? Um, and Randall, of course, is just like, I, you know, I'm the Luke of the story. And it's like, uh, I, well, what, am I the Han? Well, no, I always kind of thought Elias was like the Chewie and stuff. I'm not even Lobo. He's the headfoot looking guy. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, so this, this also is interesting because it really starts to show and kind of lean into a little bit more of what's going to happen. We heard like the check yourself out towards uh, you know um, Dante. We have Randall here basically saying Dante, you're not an important person in my life, despite this going like really against kind of like almost everything that Randall had told us last time we saw him in Clerks Two, saying that it means so much that they work together by you know buy back to the quick stop and everything. And so, like, yeah, it is, uh, it's super interesting, and it's super wild, and, um, this is, uh, yeah, 
Dak. You know, <laughs> he calls, uh, Randall starts calling Dante Dak, and he's like, you know, his plucky man, and that's who you are. Elias starts having some questions about the uh, script, uh, he, about the friar who is based off Elias, like as he as he was a uh, Christian, and uh, <laughs> and now since he's a Satanist, he's reevaluating like everything that's going on here, and it's like this person seems to have an unhealthy relationship with Jesus and God. Um, <laughs> And Randall's just like, well, when I met uh, you, uh, this is what you were into. So that's why it's like that for the first 36 years of your life. And that's <laughs> how I found you. So, you know, I based based it off of that Elias, not any other one. Elias throws down the script. There is no truth in this. Um... Randall's like, um, what about producing and finding my budget? And Randall's and Dante's like, I don't know anything about producing or finding a budget. I like, what, what do you mean? What, a, that's what you want me to do? I don't know anything about that. Um, and so Randall's like, yeah, I think we can do this for like, 25 grand well technically 27,525 or 28 dollars whatever the final total of clerks was um so <laughs> uh elias and blockchain are like hey we launch our crypto kites next month if they really start to fly and take off we'll be able to you know um we'll be able to invest in your movie and uh randall's like well no i kind of got to do this now i also don't know about your make-believe stuff if it's going to work or not um so now it's up to dante yet again to take the reins and start making uh control here start taking control here of what uh randall wants to do and get done per usual um for this stuff and you know i think that's another reason why i really liked uh clerks 2 is because i really fi feel like clerks 2 is actually more of a dante story than a randall story whereas the original clerks i think was like an encompassing story of both of them but i think clerks 2 became you know dante's story and now clerks 3 is really becoming randall's story and so now they have uh, a huge fight about the budget and trying to get everything together and i remember this this was the first time then we see the gravestone of Rebecca Scott, uh, Re Rebecca Scott Hicks. And this is like about 38 minutes into this movie is we see the gravestone and then we see Rosario Dawson. And so at this point now, I remember the first time I saw it and this entire thing is entirely great. Um, it's a great conversation between Rosario Dawson and, you know, Brian O'Halloran. And it's talking about loss and love. And, like, you really conjure me up in a graveyard. And why can't we be, like, you know, having sex on the beach? You know, <laughs> something like that. In a graveyard, though. Um, and, uh, but this is really heartwarming. And this is really sad. Because, again, like, uh, seeing Dante, like, take control of becoming, a, you know, a dad at the end of Clerks 2, with going with Rosario Dawson, like, um, I held that in, a, a lot in my life as something, like, pretty cool or whatever. In the fact that, like, um, <laughs> like, I don't know, I guess I related to these characters too much. And I was like, hey, if they can do it, I can too. So, like, in the time also since clerks 2 and clerks 3 i have gotten married myself and i have also had a daughter um and so when we see this we find out that neither of them make it either um you know dante hasn't shown us a daughter because she also dies and we obviously see rosario dawson as like him imagining her um but since he actually never met his daughter grace uh that's why we don't see a baby here as well you know just kind of hanging out and it's just rosario dawson um and to be fair the another thing that they did at the end of clerks 2 you see 
Rosario Dawson like pregnant and all that stuff. Um, but here they don't have her pregnant at all either. And like what we saw earlier in the movie, she did look pregnant while she was on the stretcher and everything like that. Um, and you know, then we also find out that, you know, Rosario Dawson's like, you've been mourning me for 15 years. Um, and then he's like, I lost both of you. And, you know, Rosario Dawson tightens her coat around her stomach and, you know, he feels so alone. And this is like, man, Brian O'Halloran kills it here. Kills it. He is so good. He gives a great performance. Like, you, you feel it, man. You really feel like that dude has lost everything in his life and that he is still, like, wallowing in it. Um, he does great stuff. He does great stuff here. And, like, Rosario is great. Um, it was really excellent um, being able to meet and tell everyone, like, how awesome they were um, in these movies. Like, when I met him over the summer, like, uh, when I got to meet uh, Jeff Anderson, um, I told him, I was like, hey, you know, like, I'm that Kevin Smith Club member, so I've actually seen Clerks 3. And I gotta say, like, you were greatly missed out of Reboot, so it was awesome to see you back here and, like, you... And like, but he was like, "Ooh, you saw it? What'd you think?" Um, that was Jeff Anderson's uh, response. Uh, Brian O'Halloran also had a funny one um, because, like, I signed in an NDA, but now that the Clerks Three is out and out on home video now, I feel okay talking about this stuff. I don't feel like I'm breaking an NDA. Um, but yeah, Brian O'Halloran was like, "Oh yeah," <laughs> like, because I didn't even tell my wife um, anything about the movie. And Brian O'Halloran was like, "Yeah, don't do it. That's a three million dollar law. That's a three million dollar uh, lawsuit." And I was like, "Oh God, no! I want no part of that." Um, so then, after the, after talking to Rosario Dawson in the cemetery, we then get uh, he get Brian O'Halloran gets motivated to figure out the money. They start holding auditions, and now we're at the auditions thing. And here at the auditions, the first time I saw this. I didn't see Fred Armisen. I didn't see Sarah Michelle Gellar. I didn't see Danny Trejo. I didn't see Mel uh, uh, Melissa Benest. I didn't see Chris Wood. I only saw... I didn't see Ben Affleck. I only saw the Impractical Jokers. And that was great. Um, because the Impractical Jokers were all on the East Coast when they originally did the principal photography here for Clerks 3. So that's why when I saw it... This whole audition scene was all the Impractical Jokers. And it was cool to see them. Like, they were great. They were funny. They were awesome. Um, but I've got to say, I really enjoyed seeing, like, Ben Affleck come in here. Again, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Fred Armisen, all of them. The, you know, Lion Face, Urgh, Lemon Face, Ooh, Lion Face, Urgh, Lemon Face, Ooh. One of my favorite things in the world. Like, that is still a joke that I would absolutely make whenever I can. Um, especially in regards to acting. It's absolutely hilarious. Um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, but yeah, Ben Affleck is hilarious in this audition stuff. Like, he just lets him have him fun. He's just having fun. All of these auditions are great. And then we get Ralph Garman doing an Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger in there. Uh, and we get Ethan Supley uh, back in there talking about the sailboat um and it's awesome seeing ethan supley back because like we all know he was a big guy but now he's like ripped super super muscular like workout dude um good for him for getting himself in shape and all that stuff like he does an aw he does he does an awesome guest spot with kevin on uh smodcast and uh on that episode and it's awesome but melissa benest and chris wood like these these two are absolutely amazing we get scott Mosher in here we get freddie prince jr like oh man this is so great <laughs> this is so great and uh <laughs> it's so funny i love these auditions and whatnot um Danny Trejo is always awesome. Like Danny Trejo is friends with Jason from um, like trying to get uh, like clean and being sober and all of that kind of stuff. And like so that's great to see them uh, together and being friends uh, and working together. Again, this whole like uh, scene is like two or three minutes of just like constant cameos. One of the last ones we see is Kevin Smith's mother, uh, Grace. 
Um, and we see the one dude coming in to audition for Silent Bob. <laughs> or Silent Bill. Just pretending to fake smoke cigarettes and just... <laughs> it's so good. Um, but yeah, so this was all Impractical Jokers the first time. And I remember being... And then at the end, like when Kevin did a little Q&A after it, <laughs> the little puppets that they're trying to play on, on there is awesome. But then Kevin was like, yeah, when we go back out west, um, you know, everything's locked out here. But, you know, every film has reshoots or pickups as they will. And he's like, yeah, we're doing the, you know, pickups out there um, for everyone. So that was really cool. All of this was great. They actually, so what we did see is like where the auditions are at the First Avenue Playhouse that's actually where Kevin held the original auditions for the original Clarks um, there. And he also had uh, the original owners of the First Avenue Playhouse who are still like running it or operating it. They also make uh, cameos in the movie uh, here later on as well, which is really sweet. Um, all of this stuff is awesome. <laughs> we get Walt Flanagan coming back reprising his role as the uh egg guy from uh <laughs> from the original clerks it's a wonderful gag and like having him being like pushed out and all of that it's awesome <laughs> elias gets mistaken as a uh woman due to his new like haircut or wig or whatever that he's wearing and uh it's awesome uh We get Dante, and, you know, Dante's like, Randall, I don't know what we're going to do about this. Um, I don't know how we're all going to act in our own uh, uh, parts like this. Like, I can't act. You can't act. Like, what are we going to do? Um, <clears throat> and uh, Randall's like, hey, we saw everyone at the auditions. You saw the same people that I did. Um, we will be the people to... Um, we will be the people to play ourselves. You know, Randall is playing Randall. Dante is playing Dante. Elias is playing Friar. Elias is playing Elias. And Blockchain will play Blockchain. And it's uh, pretty great. This is pretty awesome. So, yeah, they are... <clears throat> uh, Randall is still continually making fun of, like, Elias. And, like, because Elias is like, oh, we can all transform and stuff and you know Dante's still like I don't know man like we're not actors like what are you trying to do here um and uh the Dante also brings up like all right fine if you're not you're gonna use the real us that's fine but what about the customers like you can't can't like you can't just use regular pe people <laughs> can't just like cast regular people to be able to come in here and do some stuff then we get Jane Silent and Bob rolling into the store saying, you know, like, noinch, 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 smoking weed, smoking weed, and all the stuff that Jay says. Um, they are, uh, you know, they're offed to be in a movie, uh, or they're offered to be in the movie, you know, by Randall. Um, and he's like, you still haven't even shot that one yet? Um, and who are we playing in this movie? Um, <clears throat> it's two characters. One for you and Maggie Simpson here. And, uh, so, <laughs> this doesn't sound like me. Of course, everyone has a problem with the script here. Everyone has an issue with Randall's script saying, it doesn't sound like me. It's not, like, what I would, um, expect my character to be saying or anything like that. Um, and Randall's like, you guys are going to be playing yourselves, you know? Like, um, we'll put you in charge of Crafty. You, um, in charge of coming up with all the food for the, uh, place. And everything like that. <coughs> Wasn't that a front for... And then Jay mentions that they own the cock smoker. And, uh, Randall's like, Wasn't that a front for drugs? He was like, No, we had... And Jay's like, No, we had drugs in the front and in the back. <laughs> um... I found the perfect person. Oh, and then here we go. We get Veronica coming back. Um, we got Marilyn back, and it, it was great to see her. 
it was awesome to uh, see her come back here and everything. And uh, yeah, this was great. Um, it was kind of interesting where like Kevin had talked about it was like this might have been a scene um, or a sequence that could have been cut. But like Marilyn on the day of the set and everything through here, she just brought it and killed it. And I think she's awesome. I like I would be at this point I would be upset not to see her in Clerks Three. So like it was really exciting to see her um, come back for this and have her show up for it. And like it was great. I I really love this sequence. Um, Randall sent her the script and she has kids and stuff and is like, why you can't be sending that stuff like to me? What is this? That's deranged and dirty. Um, and. Uh, and uh, she says, unlike both of you, I have a family. And she's mad. Well, she was mad at Randall about it and taking it out on Dante. Obviously knowing the tragedy that happened to Dante. She feels genuinely bad about it. And then, so here we go. We get <clears throat> Brian O'Halloran and Marilyn sitting in the uh, car here. They're talking, and, you know, like, uh, um, she said to, she's, she's explained, she's got some issues with, like, her job or whatever, you know, two cancellations, her, her ex calls, says that she's not put, or their daughter's not going on his insurance, and that's somehow, like, and that her daughter's all mad at her, and that's her fault, and, you know, get Dante, you know, uh, we had Dante telling the truth here, you know, being like, "Hey, if Randall had told me he was gonna, if Randall had told me he was gonna send you the script, I obviously would have told him not to send you the fucking script." Um, and so, like, uh, he's like, "So, like, I, I am genuinely sorry about that. That's not what I like. I, I never meant to do that." Um, and. Uh, he, she asks, and he, you know, Dante's like, hey, you, you look good and stuff, like, trying to cheer her up and, like, just being like, let's chill out and, like, calm down and everything. And she's like, how good do I look? Not a day over what? And he's like, haha, 37? And then we cut to everybody who was inside the quick stop, Jay, Silent Bob, you know, uh, Blockchain, <laughs> Elias, and... Randall and then the car is shaking with Dante and uh, Veronica in there and it's great. It's awesome um, So now we start diving into uh, Like Jay and Silent Bob practice well Jay practicing his lines and everything like that trying to come up with something we get uh, <clears throat> Elias and blockchain coming in Randall has has Elias watching a cat all day, and Elias is allergic to cats. And he's like, "Well, I'm allergic. I can't do this. Um, <laughs> my allergies." Um, so all of this is absolutely hilarious and stuff. Jay's coming to Randall, being like, "I have ideas about uh, <laughs> about how to say my lines and stuff." And uh, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me. Randall's like, very nice. Very natural. <clears throat> oh, something in my throat. So, Randall, Dante, they're going, uh... <laughs> <clears throat> they're just going back and forth, and, you know, Randall's like, hey, when I said be a producer, I didn't mean produce a late-in-life child. And, uh, but, you know, Dante's like, hey, uh, you know, I may have found you the money. I've got a meeting later this afternoon. And, uh, Silent Pop, see, then we find out that Silent Bob's going to be the DP. Um, he's like, DP's just a do job. Cinematographer's a DP. Um, <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, since Silent Bob's going to shoot the movie, um, they're saying, like, they're giving their ideas and everything about this. This is all extremely great. It's uh, going to be an unconventional film, as they say. 
Um, <clears throat> and this is actually where uh, one of the <laughs> Silent Bob comes back. And you know how Silent Bob in virtually every movie um, in his appearance usually has like, if he talks, he has like one kind of like profound thing to say. Um, he's like, Jay's like, you know, Silent Bob wants to shoot the whole thing. <laughs> and he goes into... <laughs> Uh, into what um, people told him about this place. Like any filmmaker would see, like this is what um, uh, his buddy Dave Klein, who shot the movie, was like, the colors are bad here, and like the lights are really bad and all of this, if we shoot in color. And Kevin's like, well, what if we shoot in black and white? And Dave Klein's like, well, that gets rid of all of those problems, and that's not an issue anymore. And then Kevin's like, well, we'll shoot in black and white then. Um, to try and make it as easy as possible for him. And then, like, when reviews started coming out, they started saying, like, oh, being shot in black and white gives it the appeal or the idea that it's shot from the convenience store, uh, the convenience store <clears throat> uh, security cameras. And it's, you know, Kevin was like, no, it was just, like, how, how we shot it to avoid these issues of, like, color and lighting and all of this stuff. And then we get the uh, awesome bit of uh, of Dante calling his ex-wife, uh, who is uh, Jennifer Schwabach, Kevin's uh, Kevin's uh, wife in real life, um, who he was engaged to at the beginning of Clerks Two, and obviously ends up breaking it off and everything with um, by the end of Clerks Two and being with Rosario Dawson. Um, very short-lived, I guess, and. Uh, so, you know, he asks her for a loan, you know, like, um, what can, can you help us? Will you do this? And he's, and she's like, well, what collateral do you have? What happened? And, uh, he's like, I'll put up my half of the store for it, you know? Um, and then, so she, uh, she agrees. She agrees to like, you know, give him the money and everything, uh, half the store to be able to get the collateral to be able to get the movie going because that's what Randall wants and uh, so now the last customer leaves the quick stop they close the uh, gates here and um, they're getting ready to <coughs> to shoot uh, to shoot uh, their movie and stuff and this is great um, you know they've got Dante and the original guy at the end of uh, Clerks, who at the at the end of the original Clerks, the original ending, Dante dies and gets shot instead of like the pull away and pull back that they actually do. Um, Elias, now now we start getting into like the truly reshooting Clerks. We have Elias foaming at the mouth, dropping off the cat. The cat actually, um, <clears throat> the cat actually like poops on like on the first take here uh, for it we get them outside with uh, this is really funny because Jay I guess during the original shooting kicked everyone out from where he was uh, like if they shot like things outside or whatever and it uh, <laughs> He kicked everyone off of like set and made them go into another room or something so that he could just act or whatever and that's basically what we're getting uh here in this scene is that randall dante elias blockchain they all have to uh, go inside um and jay's just like come on all of you go okay Jay still isn't dancing. Randall is still really, really mad. Why aren't you dancing? Why aren't you doing this? Um, and Jay's like, you gotta tell this guy to go, you know, him to go inside. And, like, Randall's like, what's going on? What is... What? He's not even paying attention. The guy walking? No. You have to go inside, Jay is saying. It's like, you need to go inside. You, like, what are you doing? Like, you need to go inside. I ain't worried about the other guy, um, but you need to go in there. <laughs> <coughs> oh, super funny. And 
So then Randall, through a microphone, goes, action, closes the door, goes inside. Now we start reshooting the outdoor scene of uh, Jay and uh, Silent Bob uh, dancing out front of the uh, convenience store, the quick stop at night. It's so good. It's such a classic scene of, uh, of it. And it's got to be really weird because like dave klein didn't shoot this movie um dave klein has like since like clerks and like a bunch of other stuff um i did clerks and then <coughs> i'm not sure when he was able to work with kevin again but they've worked at least one or two more times since then but dave klein also went on to like shoot things uh like uh uh, uh homeland won a bunch of like Emmys and stuff for that I think uh, and then uh, we also like his producing partner Scott Mosher went on into like dominating the animation world with like the Grinch and all of that kind of stuff um, so yeah now we're going back through like the random um, reshoots and remaking of the original Clerks um, and it's pretty awesome like it's really awesome seeing this and then like how in the background they also have random people just kind of showing up um excuse me they just have random people showing up um and we've got dante taking pictures of randall in action like behind the scenes production photos and stuff uh they are feel <laughs> like people are still trying to get into the quick stop they're filming at night now um and jay cannot get his uh lines down for this scene and we're gonna get <laughs> jay can't just can't get the line down and silent bob's just so mad kevin smith is just so mad i'll just say the line myself and he's like, you know, there's a million fine woman, looking women in the world, but none of them just come to your come to your work and give you lasagna um, <laughs> and bring you lasagna, um, which is true. Um, that's usually somebody pretty special. Uh, it's awesome because we see we see Randall with heavy eye makeup on when he's talking to. Her. Veronica and Jay just shows up in there and oh man it's awesome <laughs> shooting in the back seat here of them just swishing back and forth between <laughs> between Randall and Dante is hilarious like that um blockchain and Elias lifting up the gates and just hanging out in front of uh <laughs> quick stop is pretty awesome <laughs> <laughs> they're just dancing and being wild and all kinds of crazy stuff um then they're recreating the uh Dante painting Veronica's nails which is also awesome that they repeat that same kind of like notion of Dante painting the fingernails and uh toenails of then like Rosario Dawson Right here, we get the end of, like, Randall being like, no, this is where I think you would, you know, die. And uh, and he's like, what, what are you going to kill me off in the third act? What if there's a sequel? And Randall's like, a sequel? What do you think I am? Some sort of hack? And uh, so, like, I'm still pay or play, right? Um, and, uh, and Randall <laughs> cuts the guy out um right there but it's really funny because i believe that was the original guy who did get cut out they you know obviously bring him back and like that's what's the really cool thing about this movie is is like how much um kevin layered it with like the fun story of making like clerks and stuff and like he gets to remake clerks sort of in this and but also weaving it in with like his heart attack and like his real life and all of that like um I don't know. I just really liked Clerks 3. Like, this is really great. Um, and, like, um, the all of these reenactions or, like, um, remakes of the original Clerks scenes and stuff are awesome. 
Um, <clears throat> and uh, the uh, one of the the woman who just ran out here is, uh, I believe, she's one of the owners of the First Avenue Playhouse, uh, if I remember correctly. And that's part of the reason, like, why they brought her in and everything like that. Um, had her come back and everything because, you know, she was there. She was local. She, you know, was nice to Kevin and all of them um, way back when. So, uh, but this is great. You know, we get some more conversations of uh, Star Wars here. And we also get Randall being very picky about the lines, calling cut and, you know, uh, Randall's being super picky about the line and line choices and everything like that that uh, uh, that uh, Dante is saying or miss saying I should say and that's always great we get the uh, one random guy is like Randall is it my time to come in yet is it my time yet um, <laughs> that's so funny it's so great <laughs> and then uh Jay, uh, Jay says something about, uh, uh, <laughs> about Thomas, and it turns out that Thomas's son is behind, uh, Jay in the, uh, in the store, and, uh, like, takes off his shirt, and is like, what'd you just say about my dad, and starts chasing Jay out of there. Right now, they're redoing the Chewy's gum, and, like, the uh, Randall's wearing the Movies jersey, which is an awesome jersey. The purple one with the movie symbol on it. I love it. Um, but the Chulies guy, instead of taking out like a fake uh, lung, he takes out a uh, like a stomach of an animal. Now we get uh, Ernie O'Donnell is back here, and I believe uh, that was Kevin Smith's like one of his first girlfriends, Kim. Um, who comes back and like they were in the original cut and, or the original clerks <clears throat> and like you know it's an Asian design major um it like you know and then like they're like wait 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 we cut this is some racist stuff um wasn't he <clears throat> and now they can't remember if he was in Asian student who was a design major or if he was a student who was an Asian design major or what it was but now they just were like oh god so they move on from that which is like really funny and stuff and everything like that um uh they they go back to movies now because uh, Randall has Jay and Silent Bob working on securing the location and this is really awesome this is just like the uh, very similar to what I would call like the road trip sequence in uh, Reboot uh, where you know Jay and Silent Bob get um, super high and like kind of pass out from like super strong edibles um, given to them by uh, Millennium and by Millie and, uh, and she, uh, so, like, they pass out, and then they daydream, uh, or, like, have a dream of, like, hanging out with, uh, Method Man and Red Man, and, like, from, like, How High and stuff, and it's, like, it's great, I love it, uh, it, amazing, amazing sequence, um, but this time, they, J Jay and Silent Bob just get really high with all of the movies workers, and that's how they're able to get let in. You see one of them bringing in a donkey into it, and Dante gets there. He looks at movies, and looks at the movie sign. He's like, no way, can't do it, not doing it. And bam, Rosario Dawson shows up. Of course she does. And he can't handle it. Dante is beside himself right now. Um, he is starting to break down and lose it, and, um, you know, it sucks sucks for him he hasn't been in there in that building you know since she died um and yeah this is uh he takes off his movie smock and he just runs away and rosario dawson's like nope don't do this 
then we cut to Rosario Dawson looking like she's going down to grab the smock, but it turns out it's Randall. And Randall's like, ah, oh, god damn it. Um, so they end up. <laughs> this is Lisa and her daughter. And my husband, Lando, who can go straight to hell. And. <laughs> <coughs> So, this is uh, Lisa and her daughter, and they are the press that Dante uh, got to come interview them for the uh, for their movie and everything, and the making of the movie, and to get uh, some press going for it. And uh, <laughs> and this is uh, hilarious. So. Lisa, but Lisa is here. She is very demanding. Um, I can't remember what the actress's real name is, um, but she is hilarious. She's great in this. Um, Dante shows up now, hammered, and he is ready to act. And, <laughs> and Lisa's like, he looks, he is drunk. He looks like he needs a piece of bread and butter. And uh, Randall's like, all right, I realize in going to movies was um, a bad idea or that it wouldn't be good for you, but you can't just walk off like that. And then, what, you come here, like, tanked? Um, and, like, Randall's like, why do you keep thinking for yourself? Why are you being so selfish? And, like, I appreciate you getting pressed, but, like, the kid and her mom from the, you know, the high school paper, like, come on, dude. Like, what are you even doing here? And, uh... You know, Randall is just not being very appreciative of uh, Dante here. Not, like, you know, um, giving Dante his credit at all. Um, because Dante has done a freaking lot for Randall. And, like, Randall is just like, you're not getting it together. What are you doing? Like, I, what are you doing here? You're ruining everything. You haven't helped me once or at all. Um, so now we are in the uh, chip and salsa, you know, shark, you know, the Jaws kind of, like, conversation all of this. Um, and this is, uh, this is great, you know, mimicking the Jaws theme, you know. Ba-dum, da-dum, da-dum, da-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum
but obviously we've had a lot of um, changes between them and everything that's gone on. Um, and uh, and Dante is like, what have you ever done in life other than just mock it? And Dante is like, I had a life. I was this close to ha happily ever after. And then one drunk driver later, all that's over. Nothing forever no more happy ending no more sequels not even a third f freaking act just a f you and goodbye credits um and dante is like is like clearly emotional he's drunk too and he's screaming and he's yelling but he's letting his emotions out because he clearly hasn't been talking about it that much like this is probably a dude who didn't go to therapy after this happened um and then at some point silent bob like puts down the uh puts down the camera and tells blockchain to put down the uh boom mic because like this isn't this this isn't for the movie this isn't what we're trying to do we don't want to see this um and Dante's like, yeah, you make sure that, like, you've made sure that everyone's trying to do your movie and, like, trying to get everything done for your movie, your movie, it's so important. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> Dante is just so mad and upset, and he's like, Randall, your life is my life. We've, the, we have the same life. We work together, like, <laughs> and... Did you ever think that reliving it, I didn't want to relive every single day, even the bad stuff while making this movie? And Dante's just like, I'm done. I'm out. I quit. I quit the movie. I quit being your friend and everything. Because I'm not even supposed to be here today. And then Brian passes out falls over and lisa is extremely happy she's like wow that's amazing that's what i call uh acting and stuff and you know randall's like hey drinking mcstinky get up and brian is clearly or dante is having a heart attack which goes back to what you know dr leidenheim said hey you better get your heart checked out as well and if you've had the same diet as him you know you got to do that. Um, and uh, Randall and Elias are just trying to look for Dante. Um, and he's having a heart attack. And the nurse is like, you need to wait over there. Because they almost just walked into some random guys, uh, some random per patients, like, room, like, little operating room kind of thing. And uh, <clears throat> so... Dante or Dante's being taken care of. Elias and Randall are there, but Randall's getting ready to leave. He's like, I need to finish making my movie, man. You're and like Elias is like, Your movie? What? At this point? Your movie? And Randall's like, sitting around here isn't gonna help me or isn't gonna help Dante anymore. At least at home I can finish my movie. And now Elias lays into Randall being like, ooh, my movie, my movie, my movie. You know, I'm doing an impression of you, Randall. We're in a hospital. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for stating the obvious. No, the obvious statement, Randall, is that we need to be here. Not making the movie, not cutting the movie or anything like that. And Elias is just like, F you, Randall, man. Like, Dante did not leave your side. He did not leave the hospital. He was here for you the entire time. Um, and Dante made that movie happen. And Randall's like, I made my movie happen. I was the one with the idea and the script and the whole thing. I made this movie happen. <laughs> oh, and like, Elias is like, oh yeah, it was all you. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, and uh, Randall, <laughs> Elias is like, Randall, take your stupid hat off. Because I remember Dante doing everything, even calling his ex fiance who hates his guts, putting up his half of the quick stop to secure the financing to make your money, or to secure the financing to make your stupid movie. And Randall's like, wait a second, what? 
And then they see Dante. Um, then they see Dante getting rolled back into an emergency or into like an ER or something. Randall gets kicked out because he runs up to Dante to go talk to him or go like grab him. And he's like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know about anything or whatever. Anything like that. And uh, this is wild. This is awesome. I uh, Randall runs all the way back to Quick Stop. Quick Stop Groceries. And, uh, you know, beats up some stuff a little bit there. It's, you know, pretty mad. Understandably, I get it. Um, we get it, Randall. You get it. And, but he's catching his breath. He's outside of the uh, quick stop here. And we now get, um, you know, it's, it's some great music. And, and Randall is looking back at all of the pictures. And a lot of these are stills from all of the Clerks movies and just random stuff throughout history. And it's all of Dante basically there. And Randall goes down to his computer, to his laptop. He has his, um, you know, his grinding tray and all that stuff next to him there. He's looking at his, like, photo photo wall of, like, Dante and his whole life, of, like, him, Dante, friends, and, like, his whole life. And there's a bunch of Dante up there, obviously, because it's his best friend. And we see, uh, you know, Randall going back and recutting the movie and this is great um like he's going in there typing some things out we also get uh jay and silent bob finally smoking their big ass joint that's like a foot and a half long like that's really awesome to see uh that yeah that is just so great i love it um you know dante um i need you guys to uh, make a distraction at the hospital to sneak me in because like I'm kind of like kicked out from there and uh, Jay is like yeah we can do that like we can make a distraction for you that's no problem at all um, <laughs> and it's awesome Jay is running around and, and like they're chasing him it's awesome everyone's looking for him sound Bob peeps his head out come on out Randall goes and moseys on into Dante's room. Uh, and, you know, Dante is not looking good. He's got, like, a breathing tube and everything, like, in his mouth. He's all hooked up to, like, the monitors and everything like that. It is, um, you know, it's a, it's, it, it's a sad, it's a sad look. It, do, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good here. Um. And but Randall is like, hey man, came here. I think it's time we uh, we watch the movie. It is. Uh, I, I want to show you the movie. I recut it. I finished it, and uh, you know you're the first one I want to show it to. And so you know he lifts up the laptop, and he's like, you're gonna see. I was so stupid and wrong. Uh, and Randall starts to realize, like, you know, it hit Randall that Dante really did do everything. And Randall's really sad now and really scared that he's going to lose his best friend. And, uh, you know, Randall's like, hey, I'm here. Dante reaches for Randall's hand. And Randall's like, hey, man, I'm here. Holding his hand, starts the movie. And then we see, like, the, uh, the opening to Clerks. The car rolling up to quick stop as it's closed you know Dante you know getting out showing the boots and everything again very um, symmetry mimicking what we saw to the opening of clerks 3 here to welcome to my black parade um, yeah and this is great it's uh, you know Randall is like you know uh, explains Dante like see this is how I see you you're the main character in my Star Wars you've always been the Luke you know his voice is cracking up he's he's, uh, he's really sad he's breaking up here um, you know this was like powerful stuff and this is not um, gotta say uh, we get a flash back to now um, Dante in a movie theater 
watching um, the black and white clerks that uh, Randall has made. And, like, again, it's intercut with, like, original footage from Clerks, and um, it's great. Um, and, like, you see them just, like, the, the footage is there, but they're not using any of the dialogue or anything like that. It's all being played over um, the music and everything. And it's all been the same shots that, like, we saw already of them refilming and everything like that. Um, and this has been, <laughs> this has been great. We see Scott Mosier again, um, and all of this stuff is just awesome. They're just hanging out there, you know, chips and the salsa. Uh, and then we see Rosario Dawson's hand come in and touch Brian O'Halloran. And this is where, this is where this got really sad for me. Um, because it, like, without a doubt, like, if I didn't, if I thought that there was hope, I lost it here. That, um, you know, then we see the them replaying their love uh, at, in Clerks 2 and seeing all of that at the movies and everything. And it's awesome. It's awesome. We see Brian O'Halloran and Rosario Dawson. And Brian O'Halloran's like, hey, let's go. She's like, are you sure? He's like, yeah. Yeah, let's go. And uh, Dante's like, that's the best movie I ever saw. He's like, don't you know, one of the Rosario's like, don't you want to know how it ends? He's like, no. Um, he wasn't just my favorite movie maker. He was my best friend. We see the pullback of Clerks 2 in color that, um, that they end when they own the uh, quick stop and they're finally behind there again. Um, and yeah, Brian O'Halloran. Or, uh, Dante and Becky walk off together, um, leaving the movie theater, and uh, uh, we uh, we cut back to Brian O'Halloran or Dante in the medical bed, and he goes. He starts to fade. Um, Randall's like, "Whoa, what's going on? You know, hey, buddy, are you okay?" And Randall's like, don't die, you know, we got all the, the cold blue and all that stuff, like, going off into, um, into his, uh, you know, basically signaling that he's dead. They go back to the funeral home that they see, that we see in the original Clerks. Elias is giving, <laughs> Satan, Satanist Elias is giving the eulogy here which is hilarious. Um, we see Harley Quinn Smith there as well, which is pretty funny. Um, and, uh, you know, Elias is like, I am a Satanist now. I no longer believe in God, but I believe in, uh, I do believe if there is a heaven that Mr. Dante is in it. Blockchain is just like nodding and <laughs> making weird faces and stuff. Um, it's really awesome. Uh, this is just, it's just so great they put a Jesus kite on Mr. Dante's <laughs> coffin as well which is absolutely wild uh, blockchain gives the little metal thumbs Randall goes up there to say his piece now um, get Harley Quinn Smith you know giving a little wave to blockchain because you know that's her boyfriend Austin uh, Austin I'm sorry I don't know how to say your last name Ajir maybe um, but again you were really funny in, or you were really good in your bit in Cruel Summer and but I thought he was hilarious in Southern Lockdown um, Randall does a really great you know eulogy um, but instead I think I'd like to paraphrase the uh, Deeply Departed, not The Departed by Martin Scorsese, which is really a perfect film right up until that stupid shot of the rat. Um, so in the words of the best guy I ever knew, you're not even supposed to be here today. Ah, heart-wrenching. blockchain, all of them here. We get the like drone or 
I mean, I would assume it's a drone. They may not use necessarily um, like cranes anymore, but it was like a drone pull out show it shot. Um, we get the sign, I assure you we're mourning, um, which is really great. Um, Elias gets moved to the register side right next to Randall and uh, you know, Randall's like, you know, you've earned this spot. And I and like I always said, when Mr. Dante dies, you take, you'd be uh, my new best friend. So like, it's just like you and me, buddy. Now, and of course, we get, uh, we get uh, Dante's ex showing up, and she is here to um, get Dante's half or her collateral that she is owed and um she is you know just wants her money and that's it and uh <laughs> and this is awesome you know uh and she's like man i heard you had a heart attack too that must really mess with you that your friend your best friend dante died of a heart attack and you're still here from a heart attack um, and, you know, part of the reason why Dante died is that the type of heart attack Kevin, Kevin Smith had was a Widowmaker, where it's 80-20. 80% you die, 20% you live. So, like, since his heart attack, he said a lot of people come up to him and, like, not being like, why did you live and my family member didn't, um, but, like, they will talk that one of their family members also had that, and that family member is no longer with them. <laughs> And uh, Elias here is like, sweet Satan, lend me your might for the meek here. And Blockchain comes running in. And he's like, the kites are flying. The kites are flying. Um, and what they are talking, what Blockchain is talking about is that um, their crypto kites, the crimson whatever, um, that they did NFT, uh, they sold out. So they just made $1 million. And so, like, you know, <laughs> Elias is like, hey, I'll say it in. Um, and Blockchain's like, I just took out $100,000 because we're mil we just won a million dollars, or we just got a million dollars from this um, just for each of us to, you know, go have some fun. And so Elias says, I will never be able to earn my spot next to you and uh, helping out and being the next Mr. Dante, but I can always buy my spot. So here you go. So Elias bought his, just with that money right there, became part owner and with Randall of the Quick Stop and literally being, you know, Mr. Dante number two. And Jay and Silent Bob walk in and they're like, uh, wow, that's a lot of money. You want to buy some weed? And he's like, yes, I want to buy all the weed. Um, so they're going to go. So they go do that. And uh, they also have kites. They have the physical kites, not even just the NFT ones that they were mining or whatever, or minting or whatever that, however that goes. Um, but then you get, uh, you know, or Randall sitting there. He sighs and he's like, I wish you were here, man. And then we get a, the next cut we get, it's a little side shot of Randall just by himself. Then we get a front shot, kind of how I'm looking at you guys right now. And Dante is just standing there. Dante is a force ghost, if you will. So that was really great. And then we get the final um, pullback as we've seen in the previous two Clerks movies. Um, pulling back from the uh, register here. Um, we got Jay and Silent Bob and, uh, running around with uh, Jesus kites. Uh, and then we also get uh, Harley Quinn um, being the new, um, the new milk maiden at the end, checking all the milk. Um, just, like how, uh, just like how Kevin's mom was in the original uh, Two Clerks. And then we get the Clerks 3 uh, title card, and now all of the credits are running. And um, like I said, this movie was really great. Um, I, again, Kevin Smith and being a member of that Kevin Smith Club uh, was is awesome. I, I was able to go to a fir my first test screening ever 
Um, I was able to make it happen. Um, my wife was really awesome and really helped me uh, make that happen. So that was really great. I had a great time there. I, like I said, I got to, um, I got to meet Kevin and Jay earlier in the day there at the Secret Stash, and that was great. And then I went to the, uh, and I went to like you know Smod Castle during the day and Quick Stop during the get day. Walked around, took some pictures outside of it. Um, it was really excellent. Um, like I can't, it, like it was a great time. It was an excellent experience. I would love to be able to have that chance again for you know. The next time around, whether it be you know mall rats or moose jaws or whatever it is, um, whatever opportunity I have to see a test screening of like one of your flicks again, Kevin, I would love to be able to go. Um, but this was great. Um, the credits are still rolling, and I so I will talk through uh, the rest of this. Um, but yeah, this is like one of the longer commentary tracks that I have definitely ever done. Um, I wanted to actually watch it all the way through with the um, with the movie and stuff, so that's what I did. Um, we'll see how everyone's reception is of it. Uh, I hope you guys all enjoy it. I hope you guys really enjoy Clerks 3, and I would also highly suggest watching Clerks 3 probably before you uh, uh, before you listen to this. Um, but yeah, I uh, I loved Clerks 3. I loved being able to see it at a test screening. Um, one of the Fathom event shows, I saw it with my buddy Murphy, and that was really great because, um, like, back in high school, when I first saw Clerks 2, um, even before Clerks 2 came out, um, like, my buddy um, Murphy was uh, the guy that definitely, like, uh, was like, hey, man, movies are cool. And I was like, yeah, movies are cool. Um, and, like, just kind of, just kind of, like, gave me that little push of being like, hey, it's cool to get air it's not even it's cool to get into these things it's like talk to me about these like things and stuff and like what what did you think and you know um just was one of the first people to ask me to like ask me my opinion about it and basically i was off to the races ever since then and so like now um being able to see like a test screening of clerks three meeting you know kevin and jay earlier that day and stuff like it was an awesome time like, this movie was so good. Um, I really liked it. It was really different than what I was ever expecting, if I'm being honest. Um, I was expecting something more along the lines of, like, Clark's 1 or Clark's 2 or something like that. Um, but this one got, like, super serious and, like, really did some stuff. And, you know, like, it was, um, it was great. I really loved it. It was, um, it was really awesome. And I couldn't have asked for a, uh, you know, for a better movie. And I remember um, when I saw it, uh, like, we got to ask, like, Kevin asked us, like, what we thought after it and stuff and everything, and I was way too afraid to um, to uh, ask any questions or say anything about it, but I really did like it from Go. I saw it a bunch. I really liked being able to see the convenience tour as well. Um, my wife finally saw it during the convenience tour as well, and she also really liked it. Um, all of this stuff was amazing. Um, and now it's like the credits are nearing the end here. And I just can't talk highly enough about how much I loved, uh, I loved this movie. It was so good. It was so awesome. Um, all of it was, all of it was good. And now I'm excited though to see what he does next. If we go back to the, if we go back hanging out in a mall, if maybe we go out to the Great White North to like moose jaws or something let me know what you guys think of the uh of like what you guys want from kevin uh let me know if you guys like this style of commentary track as opposed to some of the other ones that i've done and uh you know i am going to go ahead the last bit of the credits here are rolling so i am going to sign off i am jimmy with the triple c collective I want to thank you all for joining me here on this uh, commentary track for Monday Movie Review of Clerks 3. Um, I hope you all stay safe, and please remember to like, subscribe, and uh, share this video with your friends. And um, again, with all of that, I'm Jimmy with the Triple C Collective. I hope you all stay safe. 
I hope you all have a great day. Snoochie Boochies.